Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we have a little bit of a different video, as you can tell by the title. This isn't something that I normally upload, but I thought this video was incredibly important, and someone actually suggested that I do this video, and it clicked, and I thought it was a genius idea. So to the person who requested that I do this video, round of applause for you. Very good idea, because this is a video that I feel like needs to be made that isn't made often enough in the grooming industry. So this is going to be a dog grooming video and as you can tell by the title this video is going to be all about how to prepare your puppy for grooming. We're going to be including demos and tools that you need and all of that stuff and we are going to break it down as in-depth as I can get with this that if you're going to get a puppy that is going to be required to get haircuts for the rest of its life then you need to know how to properly prepare them and how to have a conversation with your groomer and how you at home can get your puppy ready and just create a beautiful and awesome relationship with you and your groomer and make sure that your puppy is happy for the grooming process and is well behaved for the grooming process. Now I have been a dog groomer for about two years now so I am still relatively new in the industry. I'm sure there are other groomers out there who have been doing this for 20 plus years or 10 years or whatever that may have a little more insight than me but I have done probably well over a hundred puppies by now and I feel like I have a pretty good idea on how to prepare your puppy and how to get it ready and how to make it easier on your puppy on your groomer and on yourself because nine times out of ten I see a lot of really ill-behaved puppies or puppies that you can tell that weren't properly trained at home etc uh, etc et so we're going to get into all of that so if you have a puppy or you are going to be getting a puppy that is going to be required grooming and haircuts and things like that then this is the video for you I'm just going to be sharing some information and I really want you to take it seriously I don't want you to think that I'm being hateful or anything like that. This is truly information that will be beneficial to you that I really want you to take seriously if you are going to be getting a puppy and you are going to be taking it for grooming. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this video. So like I said in the beginning is all dogs need grooming. All dogs need baths. All dogs need their nails trimmed. You know, that's just part of having a dog. If you want your dog to be happy and healthy, the best way to do that is to keep them clean and groomed. Now, I'm not saying that if you get a, you know, a, a short-haired chihuahua, I'm not saying you need to take them to a groomer. You can totally bathe them yourself. But if you want to take them to a groomer, that's good too. I think this video is more or less going to be focused on dogs that are going to need full all-over body haircuts for the rest of their life. So I'm talking poodles, doodles, shih tzus, Maltese, any sort of curly haired breed, you know, whatever the case may be, this video is mostly going to be for those kind of dogs. Now, the number one question I get is how, when should I start taking my puppy to the groomer? You know, when should I start? And this is going to vary from salon to salon. Like for example, I'm a groomer at a vet clinic and we start puppies as young as nine weeks old, whereas other salons make you wait until about 12 to 15 weeks because they require certain vaccinations first. While vaccinations are very important, at a vet clinic we can start them younger because we have medical staff on site, whereas other salons don't have that, so they do want you to wait until they do have all of their necessary vaccinations. But some, a lot of salons, some start as young as nine weeks old and some, you know, 10 to 15 weeks old. It's best to call around to a grooming salon that you are interested in. Call around and ask, hey, how young do you take puppies? When can I start my puppy? Et cetera, et cetera. And they will give you all of the details on that. Now, when you first bring your puppy to the groomer, we do not jump right in and give them this full, beautiful, stylized haircut. Okay, that's just not how it works. And you bring your puppy to the groomer, we do these things called Called puppy intros. Now what a puppy intro is, is we bring them into the grooming salon where there's all these different noises and smells and things going on that they've never experienced before. So we like to do, as at my work at least, we like to do at least three puppy intros. Now you're probably asking, what is a puppy intro? A puppy intro is where we bring them in, we give them a bath, we try the blow dryer because at in a grooming salon there is a lot 
lot of loud noises, one of those being the high velocity dryer, um, which puppies don't know what the hell that is. It's very new to them. So we do like to start them out, kind of introduce them to that. And then we also do what's called a face feet and fanny. Now this varies depending on breed, but with most of the puppies we get, we do do what's called a face feet fanny. Now what that is, is face, we trim up around their eyes and around their mouth if they need it. We do feet, which is nails, and shave out the paw pads, and we do fanny, which I know fanny means a different word, I, I believe in the UK, but here in the US, that means butt. So that basically means we do a sanitary trim. You know, we, we shave around the anus and around their penis or their vulva, depending on the gender, and that basically is a sanitary trim because as we all know, puppies tend to have a lot of accidents, they're going to the bathroom a lot, so we give them a sanitary trim to kind of keep that area of clear of hair so poop and pee doesn't collect and gather and make them all gross and dirty. So face feet fanny, that's what that is. And that is exactly what a puppy intro is. Now, like I said, it's not going to be anything perfect and beautiful and stylized and you know, what you see and you know, it's not gonna be that, okay? Really keep your expectations a little bit low. Puppy intros are more about acclimating them to the process, getting them used to all of the different sounds, smells, people. It's also a really great way to socialize your puppy with other people, kind of get them used to other people handling them, other people touching them, things like that. So when you bring your puppy in for the first time to a groomer, typically they will do a puppy intro, which like I said, is just a face feet fanny, a bath and blow dry. We clean their ears, um, pluck them if we need to. Me personally, when I have a, a puppy come in for their first puppy groom, I don't pluck the ears the first time, even if they may need it, I personally do not do that the first time because that can be kind of scary and that can be a little bit painful. And I don't like to introduce that kind of thing right away on their first visit. I will usually ear pluck either the second or third time, but the first time I don't. Some groomers will do it the first time. I personally don't like to do that, but we do always clean their ears and brush them out and all that good stuff as well. Now, another thing that people don't really understand is is your dog groomer is not also your dog trainer, okay? We do not train your dog. We will work with them, you know, as, as often as they come in. We will work on their table manners and, you know, what's okay and what's not okay, but we are not a dog trainer, okay? That's not our specialty. We specialize in haircuts. We specialize in, you know, keeping dogs healthy and clean, okay? We do not we do not specialize in behavior, okay? We are not dog trainers. When you get a puppy, you know, you need to do work at home as well. You can't just bring your dog to the groomer and expect them to be perfect, okay? You bring them to the groomer, we do what we do, and then you bring them home and you continue to work with them on that stuff. Now, what I mean by that is playing with their feet, holding on to their feet, playing with their digits, holding on to their face, playing with their face, brushing them, things like that. And I have tools and examples of stuff that you can use at home to get them ready. But that is also very important is you need to do work at home as well. Not just at the groomer. Don't bring them to the groomer and then bring them home and just not do anything, okay? You really, it, it takes two, okay? It takes the groomer and the owner to make this a beautiful thing, okay? You gotta do work at home. Now, another question is how often does my puppy need to come in for puppy intros. I recommend four to five weeks. Every four to five weeks, come in, we'll do another puppy intro, and then another four to five weeks, we'll do yet another puppy intro, and then by the next time they come in, as long as things go well, we can try to do a full haircut. Now, typically when your puppy gets their very first haircut, again, it's not gonna be perfect because if anyone has had a puppy who's watching this or you have a puppy now, you know they're very energetic, they're very wiggly, they like to move, you know, they don't really hold still, okay? Puppies have a lot of energy. So typically their first haircut isn't gonna be anything perfect and that's just what you need to expect. You need to be understanding about that and you need to understand that as they get older and as they calm down more, it's gonna get better. But it is, it is definitely a work in progress when you start bringing your puppy to the groomer, at least in my situation, I know there are some groomers out there who just have a way with puppies where they can get them to, you know, behave right away. Me, I am not really a puppy person, if I'm being honest. You know, I like to touch them, pet them, and think they're all cute, but 
I'm not really the best with grooming them because I am not really a fan of puppies. So I always tell people when they bring their puppy in for a first haircut, I'm like, I will do the best that I can. You know, be understanding that they're very wiggly. I'm working with very sharp tools. So if, if you know, it's not perfectly perfect, you know, then just kind of understand that. So you just need to have a lot of time and patience and things like that. So we're gonna go over now what tools you need to have at home to get your puppy ready for grooming. Because like I said, bringing them to the groomer every four to five weeks is not going to get them trained. Like I said, you gotta do work at home. That is also very, very important. So one of the tools that you need to have at home, the big one, is a slicker brush. Sorry, there's hair in it. I was brushing out my demo dog that we're gonna be using today, so let me just... And that is a slicker brush. If you don't know what a slicker brush, here it is. This is exactly what a slicker brush looks like. Curved teeth right here. They, there are a ton of these on the market and they are all made for different kinds of coats. Sometimes they have some for coarse hair. Just make sure you're getting the right one for your pet. If you are unsure, ask your groomer and they will tell you. This one I use all of the time. I use it on um, a ton of dogs at work and this one works really well. I think this one was about $20 I'm pretty sure uh, But a slicker brush is definitely the number one thing that you need to have on hand The other thing and this goes along with the slicker brush you guys just saw me use it and that is a metal comb Okay, this is just a cheap one that I got off Amazon that I just keep at home in my home kit for my dogs But they do make more expensive ones. I'm I don't know. Okay, so I know there's a lot of groomers that are very tool savvy and some groomers will buy like $60 combs. In my opinion, a comb is a comb, okay? Just get a metal comb. It To me, they all work the same. Maybe someday I'll try a really expensive comb and have my mind blown, but for, for the meantime, like a comb is a comb, okay? Just go on Amazon, type in Greyhound comb for dog grooming and get one of these. These are also going to be very important. The one thing, and especially with doodles, is you need to brush them regularly. If you have a doodle, you should be brushing them every day for 30 to 45 minutes with your slicker brush and your metal comb. Now with the slicker brush, you need to do what is called line brushing. If you don't know what line brushing is, I wanna encourage you to look up a YouTube video on how to do it but you use your slicker brush to line brush their entire body. Once you're done with that, you go over the whole body with the metal comb. If your comb catches or it has a hard time going through the coat, you get your slicker brush back out and you line brush the area again. It is a very lengthy process, but it is something you need to do if you wanna keep your puppy or your dog in a longer coat. If you don't, they're going to mat up and the groomer will shave it, no questions asked, no arguing, no negotiating, we will shave it. And I tell you what, about 90% of the doodles that I have, they get shaved because people just are not brushing properly, they're lazy, they're not taking the time to do it, and that's when we shave. So make sure you have a slicker brush, a metal comb. These are like the number two things, the two things that you need to have in your kit. And another really important thing that I wanna stress right now do not ever, 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 ever use the brush as a toy. I see so many videos of people brushing their dogs at home and the dog will start to play. Like the dog will start to like ah, 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 at the brush and the owners will be like, oh, oh, gonna get it, gonna get it. <laughs> don't do that. Please don't do that. That is the worst possible thing you could do. I know you think it's cute. I know you think it's adorable, but it's not adorable when your dog bites your groomer. The reason why I'm saying don't do that is because this is not a toy, okay? This is a tool. This is a grooming tool. This is not a toy, okay? We, there are tons of toys in the industry, in the dog world. Get one of those. This is not a toy, okay? Repeat after me. This is not a toy. The reason why I say don't, don't do that with any of your grooming tools, your clippers, your brushes, your combs, the reason why I say don't treat it as a toy is because when we get that dog on our table and we start brushing them and they start biting at it, not only does that kind of freak us out a little bit, but that is also a sign of really bad behavior. Same thing goes for dryers. If you have a hair dryer at home and you're blowing it in your dog's face and they're at it, you may think it's funny, you may think it's cute, you may think it make for a good TikTok video or, or whatever the hell you wanna use it for. It's not cute, 
it's dangerous, okay? Because we're gonna turn on that dryer at work and we're gonna start drying your dog and they're gonna start biting at it. That's not okay, okay? So anything grooming related, brushes, dryers, combs, um, clippers, whatever, they are not toys. If you're brushing your dog and they start doing that, you correct them. Now, I'm not saying hit them. I'm not saying throw them against the wall. Just simply brush them. If they start ah, at the brush, you, ah, ah, you do that. Look them in the eye. Just ah, ah, every time they do that and you continue to brush. Don't ever stop brushing keep brushing but always correct them once they start to go for it thinking it's a toy and thinking that you're playing because they need to understand that you are in fact not playing you know it's like you're 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 doing business okay it's not time to play once you are done brushing grab a toy and give it to them and start playing with them or if your dog is more food motivated give them a treat after you're done or during if you're during brushing you know if they're being good for it give them a treat. If you're brushing and they start going for it, don't give them a treat because they're going to think that, oh, if I attack the brush or I start playing with the brush with my mouth, I'm going to get a treat. So don't give them a treat then. If you're brushing them and they're being good, say good boy, good girl, and give them a treat. But don't give them a treat if they're going for the brush, okay? That's just going to reinforce bad behavior. I see so many people on TikTok, you know, posting videos of them, you know, playing with the brush with their dog and their dog biting at the brush or biting at the hair dryer. It's not cute, okay? That is literally hell for us groomers. It is hell on earth. And eventually as they get older and their teeth get bigger and their mouths get stronger, we're going to have to start muzzling them because we don't know this dog. And if they're biting at the brush or the hair dryer, we don't know if they're trying to come at us and we don't want them to hurt themselves by biting on this, okay? This doesn't feel good, okay? You don't want your dog to bite on this, okay? So just please, please avoid doing this. Also, another thing is I want to run over how to properly use a slicker brush because there is a correct way and there also is an incorrect way on how to use a slicker brush. I see a lot of people doing this on their dogs, okay? Like people will just fucking go in there. That is not how you use a slicker brush, okay? It's not like we're brushing our own hair. Okay, this is a different kind of brush, different kind of bristles, and there is a technique on how to use the slicker brush. If you use it improperly, you are going to hurt your dog, you are going to cause brush burn, and you are going to cause micro tears. So one way, and this is how I was taught when I went to school, is roll up your sleeve, take your forearm, this part of your forearm, and start practicing on your skin. But there is a technique that goes the same for every single dog and that is called the pat and pull method. You use the pat and pull, pat and pull. One thing is when you're using a slicker brush, your wrist should never move, never, never move, okay? Your wrist should stay stationary, okay? Hold the brush, whatever's more comfortable. Some people hold it like this, some people hold it like this you know, whatever, okay? Just however is most comfortable for you and you're gonna pat and pull. So when you're brushing a dog, pat, pull, like this. Your wrist should never move. And again, try it on your forearm. So I'm gonna show you a little demo. I have a little, uh, I have a little star of the show here. This is my little model dog. This is Kevin, okay, Kevin. And I'm gonna show you just on like a back, leg or something. See what I'm doing? See how my wrist is staying stationary and not moving my wrist? This is the pat pull method. Oh, you could use some anti-static spray, my dude. So pat pull, pat pull method, just like that. And then once you're done doing that, take your metal comb and check. If the comb goes through it with no issues, then that means you've done a proper job brushing. If it goes in there and it gets caught, kind of like this one right here, Take out the comb, don't ever force it through, and just brush through it again. Pat, pull, pat, pull, pat, pull. Okay, once you think you got it, take your comb and pull it through, just like that, okay? Just like that. And you should be doing this on a regular basis with your dogs at home. You should be brushing them every day um, to keep the coat in a healthy condition, all right? So those are the tools you need and that's how you need to use them. If you're still unsure, talk to your groomer and ask them, can you be like, can you show me how to do this? Can you show me how to brush with this tool? And they will be more than happy to show you, all right? Another tool, and this one is kind of a little crazy, kind of unorthodox, but sometimes it works. An electric toothbrush. 
Okay, I know a lot of you are thinking, hold on, what the hell do I need an electric toothbrush on my dog for? Well, you're not gonna be brushing their teeth. You're not gonna be using this part on your dog, okay? I'm talking the motor part. And this goes for dogs that are going to need full body haircuts. There's hair everywhere, oh my God. Now, typically when a dog comes in for their first haircut, they are very, very frightened and scared of the clipper noise, okay? It, there's vibrating something on their body. They don't know what it is. It's kind of scary. This is all new to them. So what you can do at home, and this is what I recommend, is an electric toothbrush. Now, you don't want to turn it on and just start touching your dog with it all over, okay? That's going to scare the ever living shit out of them. So what I do, and again, I'm going to take my little demo dog right here, okay? Kevin, let's show people how to get this done. What I like to do is I have my puppy right here, okay? Little Kevin. So at first, I will show them the brush, okay? I'll show them the electric toothbrush. I'll let them smell it, let them check it out, and then I will turn it on, okay? And again, I'll hold it not right on their face. You don't want to do that, but I will hold it and let them smell it, let them kind of check it out. I'll turn it off. And then what I'll do is if they're cool with that, awesome, give them a treat, say good boy, good girl. And then what I'll do is I'll take it, I'll have it off, and I'll start just rubbing their body with it while it's off. You don't need to turn it on right away. I'll, you know, rub it down their back, down the sides, you know, back of the neck, around the neck, down their legs, just to kind of get them used to having something around the area, just something touching in that area. And sometimes that can help in dog grooming is if you have a dog that's maybe a little bit skittish about something, sometimes it helps to touch the area before you go in with the tool. So I'm taking it rubbing it around the body they're being very good give them a treat reward them and then that if they're if they're good for it so far you turn it on okay and then that's when you very lightly just start rubbing it across the body and this is to simulate clippers okay because clippers when we use them in dog grooming, they do vibrate all right so just kind of rub it down the body around the body around the butt area down the leg, you know, around the neck, down the legs, especially those feet. Really focus it around the feet there, on the chest area, around the neck, and then you can start moving up more onto their face because it's also very important. A lot of dogs need their faces groomed, so you can, you know, do the back of the head, do the ears, you know, the chin, the other ear, and then you can start putting it around their eyes. So kind of like this motion right here. If they're being good for that, if they did very well for that, reward them, praise them, give them a treat. Now, I wouldn't say that, you know, this step is absolutely necessary. I mean, if you really want to work on your dog at home, you can definitely use this as a tool, but you don't, you don't have to. Um, us as groomers, we do work with them on that during their puppy intros. Like we will take our clippers, do the same thing, let them smell it while it's off, turn it on, let them smell it while it's on, rub it on their body a little bit, get them used to it. So, I mean, we do that as groomers, but you don't necessarily have to do the electric toothbrush thing at home. It's just something I like to recommend to some people. So if you're interested in that, there you go. And that's how you do it. Another thing I want to talk about, and I talked about this earlier, and that is playing with your puppy's feet, their digits, their nails, and their face. Those are probably the two areas that groomers struggle with the most. We have so many dogs that either don't like their nails trimmed, they don't like their feet touched, they don't like their faces touched. Now, not all puppies, you know, can be trained to like it. There are just some dogs that are just born and they're just like, stay the fuck away from my feet or stay the F away from my face. You know, that, ju that happens every once in a while, but there definitely are situations where you can just tell that the owner didn't do any work at home and then we have to end up either not being able to finish the groom or we have to keep them muzzled most of the time. And nobody wants that for their dog. So there are ways, like I said, to get them used to having those areas of their bodies handled. Now you wanna touch your dog everywhere to get them used to being handled and touched, but definitely the feet, the nails, and the face are the most important parts, especially for Shih Tzus, Doodles, where they have to have their face touched, and pretty much every dog that goes for feet. And there is 
is a right way to do it and there is a wrong way to do it. And I'm going to tell you and show you on our little demo dog, Kevin, I'm gonna show you the right way and I'm gonna show you the wrong way. When you get your puppy and you can start doing this immediately when you start bringing them home, you know, get them comfortable, you know, introduce them to your home after a couple days is when you can start doing this stuff. And I'm gonna show you how to touch their face properly. So I'm gonna pop Kevin up here. When groomers need to groom a face, the main areas that we need to focus on are this part of the face, the muzzle part, and the eye part. That is usually the parts where we need to touch them and groom them. So when you are playing with your puppy at home, obviously, you know, pet their head, pet their ears, pet their chin, you know, just get them used to you touching in that area. And then once they get used to that, that's when you can start practicing holds because groomers need to be able to hold the face while we are grooming it. That's very important. You never go in with a sharp tool without holding onto that face because if you go in with scissors and they're flailing their, he their head all over, you're going to cut a nose, you're going to cut an eyelid, you're going to cut them, okay? So groomers have to be able to hold the face while we are grooming it. All right, and there is a right way and a wrong way to do this. Now, the wrong way to do it. Do not take your puppy and hold them like this. Don't do that. That's not how we get them used to holding their face. Don't hold it like this. Don't hold it like this. Don't grab them up here. Don't grab them by the scruff. The proper way to get a dog and your puppy used to having their face held is the chin area, okay? The chin and the sides of the face. So I'm gonna show you. So you're playing with your puppy, you're touching your puppy, and now you're gonna practice holding the face. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your index finger and your thumb, and you're just gonna hold the hair right here, right under the chin. Now you're not gonna be pulling down, don't pull. Just simply get a nice grip right here on the hair and just hold, okay? Now at first, they're not gonna like it. They're probably gonna flail their head, they're probably gonna scream. That's okay, That's that you're not hurting them, they're just not used to it. The point of doing this is to get them used to it. As long as you're not pulling or twisting or whatever, you're not hurting them, I promise. Even though they may scream and cry, that's just what puppies do because it's new to them. So when you're at home, hold their face like this, just with your index finger and your thumb, and just hold, just like that. Now, the wrong way to do this. I just said, don't pull, but there's also another thing a lot of people do wrong is when their puppy starts flailing their head and they're moving and they're screaming and they're crying, people will let go because they think they're hurting their dog. I can respect that, okay? I know, it may seem like you're being evil, but I promise you're not, okay? So when you're holding their face like this and if they start flailing their head all over the place, do not let go, all right? Because if they're flailing their head all over and crying and screaming and you let go, that's going to teach the puppy, oh, if I scream and cry like that, she'll let go, okay? That is reinforcing bad behavior. So hold their face, just like how I showed you, in index and thumb, okay, just like this. And if they're flailing all over, like, ee, 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 you know, you know how puppies are, do not let go. Hold on to that face. Once they calm down, once they're doing this, while you're holding on, if they're doing this, once they calm down, then you let go. Good girl, that's a good girl, and give them a treat. Right after you give them a treat, do it again. If they start flailing like this, do not let go. Now, obviously, if they start rolling and they're going to risk really hurting themselves, then obviously let go. But I'm talking if they're doing this or whatever, don't let go. You're not hurting them. So you grab again. They start doing this. Don't let go. The second they calm down and they're like, oh, okay. Then you can let go. Praise them. Give them a treat and do it again. Hold right here. They start doing this. No. And, you know, don't, don't scream at them. Don't yell at them. Say, no, stop it. Don't do that. Hold still. Don't do that. You're just scaring them more. Okay, just keep calm. Say, it's all right, good girl, good boy, you know, whatever. While you're holding on, while they're doing that, as soon as they calm down, you can let go and praise them and give them a treat. Same goes for the side of the face because groomers don't, you know, we don't just hold right here. Sometimes we need to hold, you know, over here or over here so we can get hair over here or vice versa, whatever. So same thing, index finger and thumb, 
and we just hold the hair. We're not pulling on their lip, we're not pulling their face down, we're not hurting them. However, for a puppy, this is very new, this is very weird, this is very scary. So yes, they are going to cry, they are going to pull, they are going to flail their head. That's okay, we have to get them used to this process, all right? So again, same thing on the sides, hold right here. They start doing this, wait for them to calm down, let go, give them a treat, praise them, and do it again. But the most important thing is to never let go. And the difference is, is if you pull your hand away while they're struggling and screaming, they're just going to associate misbehaving makes it stop. Whereas we want to promote behaving makes it stop. That's why as soon as they're done flailing their head, that's when you let go. Okay, once they calm down, that's when you let go because that's going to teach them Oh, if I calm down, then it stops, all right? That's very, very important because so many puppies I see, I'll go to trim their face, so I'll be like, okay, like, let's trim your face, la-di-da, and I'll go like this. They go berserk, and that teaches me that at home, the owners are doing this and then letting go as soon as their dog starts to freak out because they don't want to hurt their dog or they don't want to hurt their dog's feelings or whatever the case may be. Again, I can understand that. I can respect that but don't let go. As long as you or your dog are in not serious risk of hurting yourself or themselves, you're fine, okay? Just holding that hair, getting a good grip, that's totally fine. You are not hurting them. Same thing over here, okay? You're not hurting them. It's very, very important for grooming to get them used to this. Those are like the main parts, at least for me, that I need to hold for grooming. It may be different for other groomers. You know, some groomers may want you to hold other places of the face, but mostly the chin area and the sides of the face are the two most important in my opinion. Sorry if this is coming off a little bit repetitive, but I feel like, you know, with dogs, we're repetition is key. With training humans to train their dog, repetition is key. You only stop once they calm down, if that makes sense. I really hope that made sense. Now, the same thing goes for their feet. It's not like the best example, but, um, you know, lay the puppy on their back, play with their feet, touch their feet, you know, play with their little digits. This little model doesn't have digits, but their little toe beans, um, kind of play with those. And again, you know, hold on to their foot. Either hold it in your hand or not super tight. You don't need to like death grip their paw or anything. Just simply hold it in your hand and kind of rub. Now, obviously, they're a puppy. They're probably going to think you're playing. They're probably going to think that you're just messing around. But they need to understand that you mean business, okay? Hold that paw in your hand and don't let go. Once they calm down, you can let go. Rub their foot. If they pull away or try to bite you or try to run away, don't let go. Hold on to that foot. It's the same thing with the face. As long as you let go once they calm down, they're going to they're going to associate that, oh, once I hold still and calm down, whatever they're doing will stop, okay, if that makes sense. Whereas if they're doing this and you're holding on to the paw and you're pulling your hand away because you're scared of upsetting your dog, they're going to associate bad behavior makes it stop. We don't want that as pet parents. We don't want that as groomers. So those are just some very important things that I wanted to show you on Kevin. Kevin, thank you for being an excellent model today. We, we appreciate you. Now, that those are things that you need to work on at home, but your groomer will, will also do these things, okay? When you get a puppy, it's not only you and your puppy's relationship, it's also you, your puppy, and your groomer's relationship, okay? We will also work with them on those things, okay? We're not asking you to do everything. We do work on that stuff with them, but we need you to do in between the times that they come in for grooming, that gap in between is what you need to be working on at home. So once they come in to see us, we will work with them, take them home, continue to work on those things, bring them back, they'll probably get better, we'll work on them some more, and over time, you will have a very excellent and awesome dog that will grow up to be a really great dog for your groomer. Groomers, unfortunately, see a lot of situations where people aren't training their puppies, or I see, I see this a lot with um, doodle owners. Uh, people will get a doodle. Now, if you have a doodle, um, I'm sorry, but you have a very overpriced mutt, Doodles are not AKC recognized. They cannot be AKC registered unless they are in, um,
Other than that, doodles cannot be AKC registered. If you see an ad somewhere saying golden doodles, AKC registered, you're being scammed. Doodles are not recognized by the AKC. They are mixed breeds. They are not purebred. There is no such thing as a purebred doodle. What a doodle is, is it takes a standard or toy or mini poodle, a you know, a poodle and mixing it with something completely different, whether that be a golden retriever, a Bernese mountain dog, a cocker spaniel, a King Charles Cavalier spaniel, whatever, you put those two together, it is a mixed hybrid breed, it is a doodle, okay? And I see so many people getting doodles from breeders claiming that they are purebred and AKC registered. I will see so many of them purchase those doodles for like $2,500 or something asinine like that, which is way too much money. You paid that much for a mutt? Sorry, I will never understand. And then I will get them on my schedule and I will notice that A, I have never seen them before and they are over a year old. And they bring them in and I say, hey, like why haven't they come to see me sooner or have they been groomed before? And they will dead ass look me in the face and say, no, the breeder told me not to get them groomed for the first year of their life. That is not true. If your breeder, if you're getting a doodle and the breeder tells you, don't get them groomed until they are a year old, run quickly. That is so incredibly unethical and unresponsible thing to say to somebody. All dogs need grooming. There is nothing special about doodle hair, okay? Since there are so many different forms of doodles, burn a doodles, cockapoos, cavapoos, golden doodle, labradoodle. All of their hair is different. No hair type on one litter of doodles is going to be the same. It is all different. There is nothing special about it. It can be cut from eight weeks old onward, okay? Getting your doodle groomed before they are a year old will not affect their hair, all right? So I, I truly don't understand why, why doodle breeders will tell people not to get their dog groomed for the first year and then we get them as groomers they're a year old they've never seen the inside of a grooming salon they have never felt a brush or a comb or scissors or clippers on them and they are incredibly incredibly ill behaved and that is not okay because that ju that just it's just going to lead for a very expensive grooming for the owner and it's going to lead for a very sad life for these dogs because they're probably going to have to be muzzled the whole time they're groomed or even sedated the whole time they're groomed and that's just going to bust your bill up each and every time okay so please please doodle owners out there start getting your doodle groomed as young as 9 weeks okay do not listen to your breeder. Your breeder tells you to wait. You're looking at a fucking idiot. And even if you don't want to get your doodle's hair cut right away, that's totally fine. Just bring them into the grooming salon and we'll give them a bath and a brush out, okay? We don't have to cut any hair off. And that is another common misconception about groomers is people will say, the groomer shaved my doodle. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, groomers do not shave for funsies, okay? Doing a shave down is not fun. All right, it is extremely time consuming. It is extremely exhausting. It hurts our back. We do not shave unless absolutely necessary. If you wanna bring your doodle puppy in and you wanna keep their fluffy hair, that's awesome. Like I totally respect that. But please bring them into a grooming salon so we can get them used to being in our tub, getting our dryers on them, and giving them a good brush out. We would be more than happy to do that for you, okay? You just have to be open and transparent and please have a conversation with your groomer if your doodle has to be shaved, it is not the groomer's fault, okay? I can assure you that right now, it is not their fault. Being open, honest, and transparent, and that goes both ways, groomer to client, client to groomer. Be open, honest, and transparent all the time, and you will have a beautiful, wonderful, long-lasting relationship with your groomer. So I think I've pretty much covered everything that is important and that I need to get covered. Um, another step that you can take, which some people will do, is also hire a professional dog trainer, you know, to teach your dog manners, like sit, stay, you know, whatever. That can also really help the grooming process as well, because if we need the dog to sit, or we need the dog to stay, or whatever, that also helps. So even hiring a trainer. Puppies are very expensive, okay? They're a lot of work, they're a lot of money, and especially if you're going to be getting them groomed, 
uh, that's even more money. Another question people ask is how often should I be getting, you know, my dog groomed? And I talked about puppies every four to five weeks, but once they start getting adult haircuts and, you know, you need to start bringing them in regularly, people ask how often should I be bringing them in? And again, that really all depends on breed. If you have a poodle or a doodle, I recommend six weeks max. Um, you should be bringing them in for grooming and that is, that's kind of expensive because, you know, poodles and doodles, they are a lot of work. They are very time consuming and they are very hard on the body for the groomer to work on. So that can be very expensive, about $100 to $120 every six weeks, okay? So please also take that into consideration when you are getting a new dog. You know, really think about the breed you're getting, how much grooming is going to cost, things like that. If you have a Shih Tzu, um, maybe like every seven to eight weeks or you know whatever so it really kind of all depends on the breed just kind of talk to your groomer just have conversation with your groomer every groomer is different I am not speaking for all groomers out there I am speaking from me my experience as a groomer um, but every groomer is different every groomer is going to tell you something but at the end of the day your groomer has you and your dog's best interest at heart okay we are not going to sabotage you in any way because sabotaging you screws us over more than it does you because we have to work with these animals so please just take what your groomer has to say take it to heart take it seriously and as long as you are you know being respectful and you're absorbing the information and you're working on them at home and you're bringing them to the groomer regularly you will have a very beautiful life with your dog and it's just it's going to be great for everyone involved so um, that's pretty much all that I have for this video I think I have covered everything that I need to cover uh, if you are a groomer out there and you have anything that you would like to add into the comments uh, please feel free to do so the grooming world can be very catty it can be very petty so if you are one of those groomers that is very hateful if you're one of those groomers where where you think you know it all, um, please do not be that way in the comments. Do not be snarky. Do not be rude. Um, never judge an owner uh, based on their dog's condition because as we all know, life happens and things happen. So never judge the condition of a dog. Never judge the owner for the condition of their dog. I mean, we do see a lot of neglect cases, but at the same time, we don't know the full story, okay? So please leave a comment if you feel that you have something constructive to add to this video. That's totally fine, but keep it respectful. Keep it nice. Keep it constructive criticism, and yeah, we should have a good time here. So I really Really, really hope that this video was informational important for you guys hopefully you learned something from this video and if I'm missing something and you're a groomer feel free to add it below but I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you got yourself a new puppy I want to say congratulations it's really really exciting adding a new family member to your home I remember when Avril was a puppy and it feels like yesterday and now she's almost six. Like, I can't even believe it. But yeah, so I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you found it helpful, please go down and give it a huge thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. If you are new to my channel and you would like to subscribe, I do upload every three to four days here. So make sure you go down and hit that red subscribe button. But as the rest of you, I love you guys so very much. Happy grooming, happy puppy life. And I will see you very soon in my next video. I love you guys. Bye. Mwah.